This video is going to be a demonstration of posting code into uh, our PBWorks site so that when you actually complete something, you can post it up there as part of your portfolio. So uh, here I am in Excel, and I want to get into the Visual Basic environment, so uh, click on the Visual Basic. You'll notice I already have a module in here. I did rename this one code. Got a little sample program. I'm going to talk briefly about this little sample program. You'll notice right off the start here that I've declared three variables, num1, num2, and num3. These are all long, so that means that they all three hold whole numbers and no decimal part. Uh, I've declared a fourth variable as a double. A double actually is a variable, a numeric variable, that will hold decimal parts, so that if you want to calculate something that's got a fractional portion, you're going to want to use a decimal, I mean a, a, a double. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. The next three lines you see here are examples, again, of using the input box. And so I just prompt them for a number, num1, num2, num3. And then I take my three numbers after the user has entered them and add them all together. Notice the use of the parentheses here to group my uh, addition. Then I just divide. That's the division symbol right there. I just divide by three to get my average. And then I have another funky looking message box statement here, but again, this is just another example of doing the concatenation with the ampersand operator. And essentially I have this, uh, this literal string right here, this string constant with the quotes, and I concatenate that onto num1. Then I concatenate that onto another string, and then I concatenate onto num2, and then I concatenate onto another string, and to num3, and so on. And finally, I add my average on there, and then I stick the period on the end. Now, I'm going to show you one thing that you can do here to, to deal with long lines. Visual Basic has what they call a line continuation character. So this, this particular line of code really extends too far across the line here. I, I like to keep them kind of, kind of tight. So what I would probably do in this particular case is I'd find a spot where I think a good line continuation character would go. And I'm thinking right after this ampersand right here, I'm going to do a line continuation. Now to do a line continuation in Visual Basic, you have to type a space and an underscore. So again, notice that I type the space and then the underscore there. And then I can hit the Enter key, and I'll just go ahead and tab that in a little bit. You want to tab it in a little bit so that it does indeed look like a new, I mean, so that it does not look like a, a new statement, but it looks like a continuation of the previous statement. In this case, you know, I could fool around a little bit with that just to get those quotes to line up perfectly and maybe make that a little neater. But again, notice that there is a space and an underscore on the end of this line, and then I continue on down on the next line. You cannot split a line in the middle of a literal string like this inside the quotes. You can't split the line there. So I had to notice I moved the whole quoted string down here on that next line down. Well, let's see if this program runs. And uh, if it does, we'll, we'll be in good shape. So I'll just go ahead and hit the Run button. Enter a number, that's what we expected already. Enter another number, that's right. And then enter another number, and it tells me the average of my three numbers is 4.33333. So you see there's no rounding or anything going on here. So the program seems to be working nicely, and I'm very proud of my work, and I'd like to upload this to my uh, PB Wiki. So let's see if we can do that. Well, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my codes. I'm just going to select it all. Uh, probably a control A would also do the th same thing. So I select it all. And then I'm going to copy that. So I'm just going to do a control C on the keyboard to copy all my code. Now I've got my code copied. Let's see if we can get that into our wiki. So here I am in my wiki. And I'm thinking to myself, I want to post some code maybe in a week one page. So I need to create a week one page. Um, I'll go into my edit menu here, and I'll click right below my practice with PB Works there, and I'm going to add a link, and I want a brand new page, and I think I'm going to call that page week one, so that'll work for me. And if I wanted all my numbers to line up really nicely when I get into week 10, I could put a zero in front of it, but I'm not going to do that. So I'll just click OK, and there's my week one page right there, so I hit save. And now I've got my new page here that I can click on. Week 1, I want a brand new page. Just leave that name. Week 1. And now I'm in the edit window on that page. Now on this page, you know, there's several ways we could go here. We could organize all our work here. But let's just call this um, first post. 
Now that's, I'm going to make that a link, you know, my first post here for week one. So I'm going to click add link and I just want a brand new page, call that first post and say, okay, then I'm going to hit the save button. So now I've got a week one page with my first post on it. So I'll click on first post and it says, uh, name your page and that works for me. And at this point now, I want to actually put my code on this first post. Now, an important thing on posting code is you don't want the uh, HTML format to, to do strange things to the way your code works. So whenever you're going to post code, you'll notice on the uh, format drop-down menu here, you've got a number of different formats that you can use for your text. And so for code, we want to use the pre-formatted option. So just before I paste my code, I'm going to choose pre-formatted, and that should be now the formatting I get when I paste my code. So I'm now going to do a control V to paste, and it pasted my code, and everything's looking pretty nice to tell you the truth. And I'm going to hit the save button, and there is my code all pasted in with all the formatting preserved. I've got the indents and everything nicely, um, and I'm feeling like a pretty happy camper about that. So let's just review what we just did here. I'm just going to go back over to my home page and I've got a new week one page that I've added. On my week one page I have my first post link and that takes me to my code. And again, I could copy this code and go right back into, uh, in fact I'll just do that, go right back into VB I think and uh, paste it. Let's see what happens. I'll copy this and go back over to Excel and go into the Visual Basic environment and I'm going to make a brand new module here. I'm going to say insert another module. So now I got module one, so I got a brand new code window there. I'm just going to paste that and there it is. Bingo! I got the comments, I got everything, I got the indents and I can actually run this and oops, it says duplicate option statement. Right up here at the top, notice when I pasted it I already had an option explicit statement, so I actually got an extra one when I did that. So I'll just go ahead and delete that one. And now my code should run nicely. And it's saying, well, which code do you want to run? I want to run the code that's in module one, not in my previous code. So I'll go ahead and say run that and type in three numbers and it tells me what my average is and I'm good to go. So I want you to uh, definitely put together a VB piece of code. I don't really care what it is. It could be one of the ones I've got. You can do a variation on this theme. And I want you to post uh, your first post and do it pretty much the way I did it. Create a week one page, create a link to a new page on your week one page, and uh, make sure that you've got some code that uh, somebody could look at on that page. Okay. Thank you very much.